All right, good morning. We're back in Tanya. We are now uh, ready to begin on a new chapter, chapter 42, which is, um, I think last week we uh, we finished chapter 41. Um, a lot of the uh, discussions in 41 and 42, although now in the beginning of 42, it goes into a whole new topic, kind of gets, it kind of diverts um like in typical talmudic style when it mentions one one topic it likes to get uh, a little off track but it's going to come back but just to recap in uh, chapter 41 the the um the um theme of chapter 41 is really um the bones the bone of, of every mitzvah the bones the bones and and the 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 foundation how we approach uh, our daily service to Hashem that uh, has to be with kavana, which is proper proper uh, meditations, especially when it comes to yira and ava. We talk yira as reverence of Hashem, ava love of Hashem, and that uh, that there are many levels to that. There's the very basics and the until the deeper. Uh, understanding and meditations and contemplations of uh, understanding the depth uh, of uh, reverence and love that we're supposed to have for Hashem every moment, and especially while performing a mitzvah. And he said that, uh, you know, even though he wrote the book for not for a tzaddik, for the Benini, uh, which is the average person, every 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 Jew by by definition has in it a natural love and fear and awe for Hashem. And all we got to do is to activate it within us by uh, even try to think a few minutes a day on, on these topics. So if we if we meditate a few minutes um, on the greatness of Hashem, and Hashem is, is, is surrounds us, and Hashem gives us life, and Hashem is, is uh, watching over us, and not only watching over us, but Hashem uh, desires this uh, beautiful, loving relationship with each of us. And uh, he's cherishing every every interaction that we have. Then, then uh, if, if we understand that, it makes it makes my makes our experience so much more powerful. One second. Okay. We also talked on the end of last week the great concept of Mesiras Nefesh, which is self-sacrifice. A, a Jew knows that serving Hashem is not when it's just comfortable and when it's um, when it's a, when you're available for it, but a Jew knows that every moment they ought to be ready to to make sacrifices for that relationship. That means to do the mitzvahs, to do the Torah. Um, no matter what, you know, when it comes to the word, the mitzvah of mesiras nefesh, of self, of self sacrifice, it's one of the six hundred thirty mitzvahs is to sacrifice yourself to for Hashem. What is the mitzvah? So actually, now I'm I'm learning with my children. Um, they they are in a competition to study the laws of the Torah through the book of Maimonides. Maimonides wrote. Uh, a book called Sefer HaMitzvot, the book of all the mitzvahs, where he enumerates all the mitzvahs in detail. So the kids have to, uh, they're studying and they're competing on it. So I was learning with my nine-year-old this, this mitzvah about um, Kiddush Hashem. Kiddush Hashem, the word Kiddush we know means what? Sanctification. Sanctification, right? We do Kiddush, is, we make Kiddush, we... What do we do? We, we bless Hashem's name, Kaddish. Yizkadal, Yizkadash, May Hashem's name be great. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. So the word Kiddush and Kaddish comes from the word of holiness, sanctification. There's a mitzvah in the Torah, and it's actually in the, it's, it's, it's included in the first commandment of I am Hashem, Anochi Hashem, I am the Lord, is to be there for Hashem, to the point where even if my life is at stake, where even my life is at stake, um, when it comes to my faith in Hashem, I am required at times 
to be ready to give up my life, which, which, which is so. So, just to clarify, there are all the mitzvahs in the Torah. We are ought to do them to the point where it's not going to take my life. Right. So, if, for example, Shabbat is going to, if I can keep Shabbos, it's going to cost my life. I have no requirement to to keep Shabbos, then the mitzvah is to break the laws of Shabbos. But there are three mitzvahs that on second that are that we do we do have to give away our life, and that is the mitzvah of um, idol worship. If somebody forces my my forces me to worship idols, or they're gonna kill me, I have to let myself be killed. Murder, somebody will force me kill somebody or I'll kill you, you have to let yourself be killed, and idolatry. So those three are the exception are the, are the exception to the rule where I will have to give up my life, I have to be ready to give up my life. But the point is, giving up my life is not only the physical sense, but giving up my life, as refers to Antonia, is to give up my 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 pleasures and my desires for things that are in line with my animal's soul so my animal soul wants to enjoy something that's not kosher my animal soul wants to do a business activity that's not so uh, that's not so kosher that's the uh, it gets pleasure out of it so when i when i when my neshama is overpowered and says no i won't do it that is called mesilus nefesh i am giving up my life my animal life so to speak for the service of hashem Commitment. That's commitment. Now, everything we are talking about comes, where does it come? Where does this power of commitment, of dedication? How do we, how do we Rabbi, you are frozen. Uh, I'm back on. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Where does it? Uh, one sec. Okay. Where does it come from? In other words, where do I begin in my in my uh, training? Let's say I want to do. I want to go into the uh, gym, in the soul gym. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very lax in my, uh, in my um, spiritual health and spiritual fitness. And I'm coming into a gym where I'm asking, help me out. So all these beautiful concepts of dedication, reverence, and love, where does it all, where does it all stem from? Like, wh where do we begin? So he's going to come here in the beginning of chapter 42, and he's going to say that it all stems from the word emuna. Emuna is what? Truth. I didn't hear you, Larry. Truth. Faith. 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 Emuna. emuna. Emus is, is true. You say truth, Larry? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Truthful faith. Absolutely. So when we say moda ani in the morning, we say moda ani lefanacha. Thank you, Hashem. For giving me back my soul, the hechazar to be nishmosi bechem l'rabo emunosecha. My faith in you is great. Recognizing Hashem's presence strengthens my faith, and strengthening of my faith allows me to be committed. So in essence, what the focus has to be always is how do I how do I exercise my faith. Just like with a muscle, they got to be exercised to strengthen my muscle. Just because I was born with a neshama, just because I was born with a soul, doesn't mean that my faith is in a healthy place. It could be very weak. It could be very dormant. So I need to activate and exercise, after exercise, this emuna, this faith. Otherwise, there will be a lack of ava, lack of yira, lack of, of mysterious nefesh, lack of kabbalah's all. All those things don't happen if I don't start with the very basic of having strong faith in Hashem. How do I get to faith in Hashem? So you got to use your kepala. You got to use your head. 
So that is where he's getting here in, in chapter 42. So we learned in the beginning of Tanya that we, and it's going to get a little bit Kabbalistic here. It's going to be fun. But let's, let's, let's start simple. We know that we have the 10 attributes of spiritual attributes in Hashem's powers that we all also possess within us that makes us who we are, which is the three levels of intellect, Chachma, Bina, Das, and the seven levels of emotion. These are the 10, these are a reflection of Hashem's 10 attributes. So in the in the in the in the in the level of intellect, chachma binodas, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, that is how I develop an idea. I think about an idea. I develop the idea, and das is to connect the idea and bring it down into emotions, which brings it into action. That's always critical in 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 developing an emotion. Similar when it comes to faith, faith is not something that is just built on um, blind faith, but faith must must be nurtured via the the intellect, via the via chachma bina das. Now, in the in the hierarchy in Kabbalah, and I, I don't have a chart, we have something above chachma, above the above, above intellect, and that is called keser. What is keser? Keser means the crown. You know, when do we say the word keser on Shabbat? In the Musa prayer, in the repetition, we say keser yitn lecha, right? In the morning repetition, and every day in the repetition of Mida, in the Kedusha, what do we say? Nagdishach v'na aritzach. Nagdishach comes from the word of Nagdishach, Kadosh. Let us extol, let us, let us sanctify Hashem's name. And then we say Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. At the Musa prayer, we elevate it to a higher prayer on Shabbos. We are leveling, we're going from Chachma, where we, we think about holiness of Hashem, the way we try to articulate, to Keser. Keser is the crown. The crown goes on top of the head, which reflects something that transcends knowledge. It, it, it represents the level that transcends my limited understanding. However, it Kesser is sitting on top of my head, meaning that something that transcends knowledge has the foundation that is being held up by something that has wisdom and knowledge to it. Meaning that the the, the to, to, it's 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 important to understand that is something that transcends understanding. It's say that again, it's important to understand, to truly understand that there's something that transcends my knowledge, not just by saying something transcends my knowledge, but to understand that something transcends my knowledge. And that's where, the, that's where faith comes into place. There is faith with saying, I have faith, because I just don't get it, I don't understand Hashem, right? And I just go blind faith. That's that's, but that's not me. That's just saying it's almost lip service. That is the faith that we are required to, to require to, to 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 acquire and to work with daily basis on a daily basis is to continue to contemplate, to continue to understand more and more about about Hashem's greatness. To come to a place where say now I understand that there's something higher than my logic. There's something that transcends my understanding. Because then I'm much more I'm much more engaged. Then it's me getting to a point. Up to here I get it, and the rest I know it's beyond me. It's it's incredible. It's like when you're reading, like like when you like you're meeting a yes, you know, one of a big uh, professor. It's, uh, a, uh, a nuclear scientist, right? That doesn't talk to your language, and you go, and he's going to give you a class. A professor in 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 in, 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 in some uh, nuclear science will give you a whole uh, give you a whole class. He'll say we for for beginners, right? And he'll give you step by step, <laughs> explaining you this or that, and then you start to slowly understand. At one point, you're like, okay, I lost him. Right? You lost him. So you're going to say, hey, oh, one second, he's he's a fake. You're gonna say he doesn't, 
that what he believes and what he understands doesn't exist? Or you say, no, with my limited knowledge, I get this is really incredible stuff. That's how much I get. The rest, I know it's beyond me, but it's really there. Right? Yesterday I spoke to a guy on the phone. He says, "What do you say, what do we, what do the Orthodox Jews say about 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 the latest scientific finding of the vast universe that we find the galaxy ways?" I says, "What, what does the Orthodox Jew have to say? We've been saying all around all along that it's Hashem's it has to be Hashem's creation. The more you see, the more we the NASA finds you know the new telescopes finding these crazy trillions to trillions of light years away, right?" And we only we haven't even scratched the surface. We realize how incredible that got to be a creator that, that put this together. It cannot, it doesn't make any sense, right? So we know there's this vast universe out there, but we don't really know anything. We just know that little. But more you know, and 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 in, and in a year from now we'll know more than we even imagine today, right? And a year now we say, well, we know more. What I know in a year from now today is just like. I can't even understand, I can't even imagine, but I know it exists. In the year from now, I know it, and the year from now, my 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 leap of faith, so to speak, will become even stronger. All right. That's really in the morning. That's the little meditation we say in the morning. Moda'ani lefanecha. Thank you, Hashem. Right? Shechazar to be nishmasi for giving me back my neshama. What is my neshama? What's the job of the neshama? Why did you give it back to me? Another day of learning, another day of meditation, another day of learning more. She for what purpose? Rabo emunasecha. My emuna, my faith is Rabo. What's Rabo mean? Anybody know what Rabo means? Thank you. Like Rabbi. <laughs> rabbi. You gotta have. You need. You need a good Rabbi. Rabo means means actually means means in Hebrew a lot. Rabo, great. Hoshana Rabo. Right, um, Rabbah means great, but also has the same word of a rab, which is a teacher, meaning my faith is great, my faith is greater today than yesterday. My calling today is that my faith in you is going to be greater. If my faith is the same as it was yesterday, I have not, I have not accomplished why you have returned my neshama to me today. Tadaraba, same meaning, Tadaraba, yeah, exactly. Rabba and Munasacha. Now, comes here in Tanya and says, and in, in, in chapter 42, it says, here's a here's a challenge. And he, a challenge that comes with a tremendous gift. And he's going to explain it's very Kabbalistic. The challenge is that we are not on the level, so to speak to have the, the enough strength to persevere in our faith, in our faith exercise to the extent that we can actually eternalize. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. It needs that when it, it's, it's, it's in, in many people, it's not activated at all. Okay. Even if you learn about it, even if you start about it, even if you meditate about it, we know that the evil inclination, the nefesh Bahamas, the, the animal soul, the more you learn, the more the soul gets closer to Hashem, the animal soul also gets stronger. Mm. Is that true? It, it's, it's because Hashem keeps giving us, again, give us freedom of choice, if I'm getting closer or stronger in my faith, my opposite force also gets stronger. It's, it's a very unfair game. Or it's a, if it's a game, it's got to be fear. It's not fun. That's why you can never take it for granted. So we need assistance. Hashem has, has given us 
the perfect assistance for the Jewish people to have faith in Hashem. Hashem gave us a gift. Who's that gift? Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe, our teacher. Moshe, as we see, we're seeing, in, is, is referred to Rabbeinu. Rab, Rabbeinu, right? Our teacher. Why was it called? Called Rabbeinu. Why was he called a teacher? He, he was a leader. He led the Jews through Egypt, to the sea, right? If you think about it, in his, how long was his career as a leader? He was literally for 40 years. It was age 80 to 120. Yeah, a bit before 80. Let's say 60 years. Majority of the time, what was he busy with? With the people. He was leading the people. He had to navigate his flock, convincing, uh, go against Pharaoh, convincing the Jews to, that we're going to leave, then leaving, then uh, breaking up fights, then and then going up to the to, to get the Torah, and then coming down, the Jews are worshiping idols, right? The golden calf. Then he begs Hashem for forgiveness. Then he comes down and he brings the second tablets. Then he builds the temple. He's leading, he's leading, he's leading, and then. 40 years in the desert, we're reading that the Jews were fighting all the time. <laughs> However, the name we give him is Rabbeinu, teacher. Because Moshe's main job was, as a leader, was to teach, teach Torah. Don't get, don't get distracted on the stories. When, when we say teaching Torah, not just teaching Torah, but as Zohar is going to tell us, he calls Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem gave us Moshe, is a unique soul that Hashem brought down to this world to, and I'll quote from the Zohar, to be a faithful shepherd, to nurture Jewish people with the act, with, with, with faith, to nurture them with faith. How? Who is going to say the word das? Through knowledge. So now, 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 this is now this is all beautiful because our Moshe teaches us, teaches the Jewish people to become, to become, become, get stronger in the faith in Hashem. But we're gonna now in chapter forty two, beginning, is gonna go into much more of a kabbalistic behind the scenes how that works in on the soul level. So I'm gonna give a little intro again. I'm gonna read. Um, let's let's actually read first few pages, and then I'll 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 try to to um, explain this a little further. The page uh, five twenty three. On the path of reverence, section one, Hamoisha's soul influences yours. In chapter 41, we touched briefly upon the Zohar's distinction between lower reverence and high reverence. At low reverence, you feel the awesome presence of God <coughs> and you're eager to fulfill his will. At the high reverence, your sense of his presence is more arresting <coughs> and you're simply overwhelmed by God. We didn't talk too much about the high reverence in the previous chapter, and we're not going to discuss this here either. First, we need to discuss low reverence more thoroughly and explore some additional techniques for acquiring it. So now, based on what we have explained above in the previous chapter about lower reverence, which is a basic requirement for all mitzvahs, observance, positive and negative, we'll be able to properly understand what's written in the Talmud in its commentary on the verse. This is a verse in, in Deuteronomy. It says as follows, Now, O Israel, what does God, your God, ask from you? Only that you revere God, your God. This is, this is something that Moshe tells the people in, in the Chumash, in Deuteronomy. Right? Oh, Israel, what is Hashem asking of you? What is asking Hashem of you? Reverence. That's what, that's what Hashem, is, Hashem is asking. So the Talmud asked on this verse, it seems from the verse, that Moshe makes very light of the word reverence. Oh God, 
what is Hashem only asking from you? Just to revere Hashem. Kind of as if it's like something you just uh, switch, uh, switch uh, as a, as a, put on a switch on. So the, the Talmud asked, Pam, which the Talmud asked, is reverence such a small thing? To revere God seems to be a considerable demand, especially what we just learned. So how can that the verse state that this is only, quote unquote, what God wants, implying that it's something minimal? And the Talmud answers, shocker, yes, for Moshe, our teacher, it's a small thing. Okay, Moshe, Moshe is talking about himself. What is Hashem asking from us to revere Hashem, to have uh, to have reverence of Hashem only? And that kind of is like making a very, that's kind of a no, no big deal. So the Talmud says, really, it's not a big deal. It's a real big deal. We know how, how difficult it is. Oh, no, no, no. Moshe is talking about himself. Okay. But the answer, how many ask now? But the answer doesn't seem to make sense. Since the word stresses, what does God, your God, ask from you? And not what does God ask from Moshe? He's asking you. Ma'ato Yisrael talks about the Jewish people. About what does God ask of you, each of you? Not just about Moshe. So 524 on top. So to answer this question, the Talmud draws on a Jewish mystical teaching that some of the energy of Moshe's soul can be accessed by all of the souls of Israel. Rather, the explanation is that every single soul in Israel has available to it an element of the soul of Moshe, our teacher, of blessed memory. And the Kuna Zohar states that Moshe's soul extends into every single generation, into every tzaddik and scholar who immerse himself in the Torah, even to the entire generation 600,000 of them. This refers to a spark of Moshe's soul which extends into the tzaddik or scholar when he's studying Torah to help him understand its correct, its correct intent. So the Chaim Vital expands this idea beyond the context of Torah scholar to all souls which are included in Moshe since it's from his soul they are all derived. They're all sparks from him. So let me explain this. Um, we know in in the, in the in the in the desert when Moshe was appointed the leader. Um, there's a there's a quote in the in Exodus when Moshe says, um, "And I have six hundred thousand people under me." Now, why? Where's the number six hundred thousand? That was the number of the census of the man between twenty and sixty. That they counted of uh, how many people were in the desert, but it doesn't refer only to the six hundred thousand. First to, uh, first to all the Jewish people. So that's in general, it's an interesting number. Now, it, we have Jewish numbers, correct? What's a Jewish number? Eighteen for Chai, right? Six thirteen for the amount of the mitzvot. The number six hundred third six hundred thousand is always referred to as the as the collect collection of all the Jewish souls. Um, the Hebrew word Yisrael. Let's see if I can do this. I haven't do haven't used this before. Let's see. Do you see a whiteboard no. on the screen? All uh, right, let's do this. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Okay, now I'm trying to type in Hebrew with a keyboard that has no Hebrew on it. So I'm taking a guess. <laughs> okay, how do you spell the Hebrew word Yisrael? Yud Shin. Where's the Shin? <laughs> Okay. Yes. Oh, where's the olive here? Anyway. Okay. 
There you go. Sorry, it took so long. All right, this is how you spell the Hebrew word Yisrael. Can you see it? Yeah. Make it bigger? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we can see it. You can see it? Yeah. yeah. Yisrael. The acronym of those five letters is y y Yud, it stands for the word Yesh. Shin stands for Shishim, Resh for Ribui, Alef stands Otiot, Lama stands for Torah. I'm going to write this in English so you know it, which means there are 600,000 letters in the Torah. You ever heard that before? Uh -huh. 600 letters? 600. 600. Why is, is Lamed for Torah? Thousand letters in to Le Torah. Ah, okay. To Torah. Yes. Yes means there is, or oh, there are, Shishim Riboy, which is 600,000, those two letters. Aleph stands for Otiot, letters, Le Torah in Torah. Every, every, every letter represents a Jew in the Torah. Now, we know that if a Torah is missing a letter, right? The Torah is not 99% kosher. It is 100% not kosher. The Torah, the missing one letter, is so critical that it makes the entire Torah not kosher anymore. Which means that, that again, every letter in the Torah is connected to a soul. When we, we look at, at, the, at Moshe, Moshe says, I have 600,000 people inside of me. It's in Exodus. I have 600, uh, 600 feet of the nation inside of me. The Zohar derives from here. Then Moshe, let's close this up here. Yeah. The, the Moshe is a soul that is connected to every single Jewish soul. Not just connected that every soul of the Jewish people um, is a, the word would be, is a um, branch out of Moshe's neshama. That means every Jew has a part of Moshe inside of them, which is the explanation why where we get emuna, nurtured emuna via Moshe even uh, past his lifetime, because that is not something that's limited to his lifetime. It is it is, con is it con constantly the ability to still have that interaction with Moshe's neshama. More, we learned in chapter one in Tanya, that Hashem brings this soul of Moshe into every generation. And that's and, and 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 who are those souls? He mentions here shortly, talks about the sages. But specifically, there always has to be a person in every generation that that is that is that possesses in them the soul of Moshe Rabbeinu. And the Talmud gives 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 examples of Rabbi Akiva, Mordechai, Atzadi. Specifically, by Mordechai it says that Mordechai was the Moshe, was a reincarnation of Moshe Rabbeinu. Um, why is that so important? Why is it so important? Um, um, to understand our our powers that we have with within us, it's good to know it's good to know this information. Because the ability to connect to Moshe, the ability to have that connection inspires me or gives me strength in especially when it comes to my Yamuna, especially when it comes to my Torah study. 
That's what the Zohar says. So let's 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 read it a little bit further, because he's going to get even deeper than that. This is just a, a little overview of what I uh, of a very fascinating topic. <laughs> let's continue a bit reading it. Um, Abichai Mital, we're in the third paragraph, fourth paragraph on 524. Abichai Mital expands this idea beyond the context of Torah scholars to all souls, which included the Moshe, since it's from his soul, they all derived. They all sparks from him. The time we argue in this chapter that the Talmud statement that reverence was a small thing for Moshe, our teacher, was referring to the spark of Moshe's soul within your soul. So in other words, being that I, each of us, has a spark of Moshe within us, so then from that place, reverence is not is not is not inaccessible. It's accessible. It's in a sense, it's something that is always available for us. So first, the tiny sites of further stores, but the connection between Moshe's soul and the souls is Israel based on the Talmud and the Zohar. I want to just throw one more thing. You all know this in the prayer. In the prayer, when, uh, in the daily prayer, we say, before Az Yashir, before the Shirat Hayam, if you look in the Siddur, the text in the Siddur says that the Jewish people, they believed. Vayaminu Bahashem, they believed in Hashem. When they saw those miracles, they believed in Hashem. Vayaminu Bahashem, Ube Moshe Abdo, and Moshe his servant. It puts the faith in Hashem on the same in the same verse, in having faith in Moshe, that the Jewish people had faith in Hashem, faith in Moshe, which is which is the source that the Jewish people were connected to Moshe. They were Moshe was their teacher. Moshe, Moshe is their spark, and via Moshe's spark, Moshe's teaching, they were they had the true ability to have faith in Hashem. So, how do you have faith in Hashem by having a strong connection to Moshe? Not to worship Moshe, but to have a connection to Moshe. So now let's continue what the Zohar says. For according to the Talmud, Moshe is one of the seven shepherds, well, it's Mika, of the Jewish people. Who are the seven shepherds and what is their function? And now you know that also we have that Ushpizim on Sukkot, right? Sukkot, we have seven visitors that come to visit our Sukkot each day, another visitor. Who are those? Those are the seven shepherds right here. The Lord teaches that corresponding to the seven divine emotional attributes, God created on earth truly worthy man to sustain the attributes and to illuminate them on earth. And they are the fathers of the world, Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Yosef, Moshe, Aaron, and David. This is uh, different views over the identity of seven shepherds. See Talmud Zohar. I think there's a debate about David or, or, or Shlomo. In Italian words, the seven shepherds cause energy and godliness to flow to the souls of all Israel, which is why they are called shepherds, <coughs> who tend to their flock and feed them <laughs> with spiritual powers. According to the Kabbalah, these seven shepherds are responsible for shepherding and nourishing the light of God's emotional attributes into Malchus and since Malchus Shechin is the source of the Jewish souls as we learn in chapter 41 the seven shepherds nourish us directly strengthening our ability to have love and reverence of God we, 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 we say that every day in our davening again we start the Amida right we say God of Abraham God of Yitzchak and the K Abraham and the K Yitzchak and the K Yaakov every one of those seven are here to give us nourishment. They nourish us and strengthen us in our faith and reverence of uh, in our connection to Hashem. So the question now is, but why then do we only need a spark from Moshe's soul in order to worship God properly? What do we need a spark from all seven shepherds? Because we're focusing on Moshe. Now we're injecting all the other ones. And we're saying that the sparks of is from Moshe, 600,000 represents every Jew, but we're not talking about the other ones. And while each of the shepherds can nourish a particular attribute in our soul, Moshe is unique. Moshe, our teacher of blessed mem memory, combines them all, nourishing all the attributes, including remnants of God. And that is why throughout the Zohar, he's called the faithful shepherd. 
being the, the archetypical shepherd who fulfills the function of them, of them all. So why is Moshe able to nourish our souls with all the emotional attributes in contrast to the other shepherds who are limited to a particular attributes? The Tan explains, and that's because Moshe causes Das, the word Das is, das, knowledge, to flow to all the souls of Israel. As we have learned, the transition from thinking to feeling, to emotions, takes place via the agency of Das recognition, a process in which ideas become personally relevant. By nourishing our Das, Moshe's soul influences the entire range of our emotions, enabling us to worship Hashem. This enables each individual to have Das of God, but the extent to which you succeed in acquiring Das depends on three factors. All right, we'll stop here. <coughs> Again, this is a whole fascinating, uh, in-depth uh, idea of Maisha in general. Give us a whole deeper understanding who Maisha was, who Maisha is actually, in the sense Sansa Maisha is very much a life, a very much integral part in our relationship to Hashem. Um, and God willing, we'll continue on that. Remember in um, in chapter two of chapter one, it says that Hashem has taken the souls of Mesha and dispersed them in every generation. Chapter one of Tani says that the verse says, Tzadik Yisod Olam. The Tzadik is the foundation of the world. In other words, the Tzadik keeps the world standing. So the Zohar says that Hashem saw that that, they, that, that uh, they're not going to be that many tzaddikim throughout history. So instead of having them in all in one time period, he took all the souls of tzaddikim and spread them out throughout history. Remember that? Chapter 1? We've got to go back to chapter 1. <laughs> How many tzaddikim you know, there was? Good question. But, uh, I just, just for reference, if you, if you later on want to go back, um, You can read it on page. Page 35. In chapter one, yeah. <coughs> Anyways, but what does it say here? Chapter and page page 36, I'm sorry. 36, okay. Right on top. Um, second, third paragraph. That's why sages taught in, in Medrash, the blessed Holy One saw that Tzaddikim were very few, so carefully placed them in each generation. Uh, but we said the word in chapter two, it talked about the Rebbe. How do you spell the Rebbe? A Rebbe is spelled Reish Base Yud. Reish Beis Yud stands for Rosh B'nai Yisrael, the head of the Jewish people. And chapter 2 explains in detail how, how the, the Rebbe, which refers to Moshe Rabbeinu, the Moshe in every generation, is the head. And just like the head um, is a control center that sends signals to the entire body for the body to function, so then the soul of Moshe is the, is the, is the, is the, is nourishes and, and, and inspires us we are the kind of the limbs of the rest of the body of Israel to be able to, to uh, operate and connect to Hashem. But that's why he uses the word here, he, he goes deeper, that it's not just the head of the Jewish people, it's more referred to the Das level. So we know in the head, the three levels, right? There's the big idea, there's the developing idea, which is Bina, and Das is recognition, cognition, meaning connecting the neck, connecting the head to the emotion. Moshe's job is to infuse Das to make sure that whatever he's teaching, whatever we are taught, whatever we're learning, actually becomes real, becomes in our, becomes in real, in a grain, in our in practicality, in our emotions, in and in our action. That's what he says over here. And that's so what Rabbi, is, So, yeah. Rabbi, the latest uh, Rabbi Shneer song, he's a tzaddik. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
That's why that's why that's why the concept of, of a Rebbe is so special. And the ability that a Rebbe going to a Rebbe or even past a lifetime, the Rebbe's soul continues to live on, and the ability to ask for blessing from a Rebbe or learning from the Rebbe is is basically the idea of a Mesha in in in, in nurturing in nurturing our faith to Hashem. Just make it very clear that we're not worshiping Moshe, we're not worshiping, God forbid, a Rebbe. But that Hashem gave us a gift in order to keep us connected, in order to keep our faith strong. Hashem gave us, and, and, and not just gave us as a gift, but in our entire setup of the souls, they are there. their job is to nourish, like I like the word from the Zohar, a, a, a faithful shepherd, a shepherd who nurses our faith, our munah. I, I, this is a great topic that we're going to continue next week, God willing. Any questions? All right. No questions. I, I well, have I a question. Lot. Yes. Um, is uh, Moish's age has any relevance on whatever we're talking about? Is it real physical age or is it just symbolic? Um, good question. Mm. Good question. This real age is for sure 120. Now, now we know it was uh, as we go through the years and, and what year he was born, what year he died. It's for sure 120. But there's definitely a, a, a symbolic uh, number to the 120, which I don't know. Um, it's possible, as we're going to learn next week, it's connected to the level of Kesser. We know that there's the 10 attributes and then there's something above 10. And each of the 10 has 10 subcategories. So this, this could be something with, with 120. I don't know. I'm sure it's out there. Ask Rabbi Google. <laughs> okay. Now let's see we come back next week. Thank you, Rabbi. Amazing lesson, like always. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yes. Thank you very Good much. Rabbi, right, see you next week. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.